This is the setup I'm using to measure data on the S50 M Roadster. I've connected into the diagnostic port. The wire runs down here, goes across and into the cabin, wrapping it around the mirror just to make sure it doesn't flap around. Goes into the cabin and into, in my case, the serial port of an old XP computer. You just have to make sure when you close the bonnet you don't trap any wires. Now we've been having rain in the last couple of minutes, so I'm going to be keeping the roof up. So you've got to tuck any connectors down out of the way. That's it tucked out of the way and it's clear of the wiper blades. So if I need to use the wipers, the wire won't be trapped. The computer is connected to a 12 volt supply, so it's constantly being powered by the uh, charger. It's important that because, uh, especially with it being an old computer, the battery is probably going to die in the half hour of the test. I haven't got any screen recording software on this computer, so you'll just have to bear with me while I try and operate the computer and hold the camera at the same time. So I haven't switched in the ignition on yet. I'm going to open Testo. And because I've got an S50, I'm not going to select the default, I'm going to select Serial. And Status Motor Vehicles, because this, this um, uses a serial port. Right, now is when we need to switch on the ignition, because at the moment this screen here is blank. I switch on the ignition to Ignition Position 2. I'll just show you the lights on the ignition. There's position one, position two, that's now fired up. I want RPM, air mass in kilograms per hour, intake temperature, coolant temperature, oil temperature. In fact, what I'll do is I'll throw in throttle position as well. I would record speed. In fact, what I'll do is I'll record speed as well, but that doesn't seem to work on the, at the moment. Uh, what I want to actually do is record data. So we'll go into data log. And it's got those data there. So just move this to one side for a minute. You want to be able to see all the screens at the same time, because if you try and swap between the screens, Let's go to gauges. There we have the gauges. Make these as big as possible. I do that. Okay. With everything in that position, I can see the gauges. I can see the dialogue, so I can start and stop the dialogue. And I can see the speed. I'm going to switch on the ignition to position 2. That's it on position 2 at the moment. Okay, you'll notice it started reading here on the air mass. So at the moment we've got readings coming through. Everything is running at the moment, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the dialogue with the engine switched off. This will give us a baseline for having the engine in the off position we started and we're now recording lines. Make sure I'm in neutral. Engine start. So here we have uh, that seems to be a bad reading. 
throttle position, that's speed. It's interesting that's a bad reading because I just had that apart um, today, uh, last night. Motor temperature, that's it. Oh, uh, I'll go through these now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and investigate that air temperature not working. That shows us that shows us another good reason for having diagnostic software because I've left the plug unplugged. There we go, 20 degrees C. Okay, starting up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the car for a test drive. The Testo data logger generates files, uh, generates two files for every download. And there's a date followed by the time followed by CSV, comma separated value. And there's another one that's an info file. I use the comma separated value file and open that inside Excel. From inside Excel, open, and this is where you find out whether you've saved in the correct format or not. In your data, in your test or data logger, it gives you options as to how you want to separate the data. You should select comma for comma separated because the default was semicolon and this is what happens if you open it using a semi if you save it using a semicolon you don't get the data separated manually you have to actually go into the data and separate it using excel itself but if you have selected comma which i have done in the newer saved files it will automatically open in separate columns so this is all the data opened in an excel spreadsheet you can then manipulate this data manually what i've done is i've made macros that will allow me to open the data in a structured format nothing that these files do automatically that can't be done manually so obviously you have to enable macros uh, I could do this as an auto open but I prefer not to so I'll prepare the data what I'm going to do is open a comma separated values file I'll just open this last one that I did. It says save, but that's just the automatic um, window that opens up. So what's happening now is it's it's just going through a process of creating charts for me to view. All of this is just saving me time. I could do all this manually, but obviously a macro is much more efficient. It takes a bit of time to do it. That's it. That's all the data imported. So I think, for instance, I can go into the speed graph. Bit complicated that one because that's got all the data for the whole run, which was 26 minutes. So if I, uh, if I go across for, say, temperature, which is a relevant one for the whole, temperature is relevant for the whole uh, distance, uh, the intake temperature rose to just above 40, the oil temperature rose steadily to above 100, and the coolant temperature went up to about 80 and held steady at 80 and then flipped. What I can do inside the macro is say, for instance, this is a period of interest that I'm interested in. So let's go to the speed graph and we have a look at um, this period here where the throttle was open fully. 
I can see that throttle point is 3965. So if I take the area around 3965, I can go back here and build the chart around 3965. So I'll put a start line in as 3900. And I put the finish line in as 4000. That means that 3965 should occur around about the middle. So here that it creates the data around that period. And there we go. That's it built around that period. So if I go back to the speed graph, there's what was happening in the speed graph around that period when I was at full throttle. Similarly, I can go into the Vanos, the exhaust Vanos, and see what was happening. I can go into the inlet Vanos and see what was happening. Temperature, not a lot of point going in there because it's just going to be constant, but I'll show you anyway. They yeah, are all at fairly constant temperatures. The airflow chart showing you what was happening. So as I was going to full throttle, the air mass was attempting to keep up with it. This area here, I call the syringe effect. This is where you're um, drawing on the syringe, but it's not pulling all the fluid in. So if you quickly draw a syringe back, you get a, you get a vacuum or a depression, an air bubble inside the syringe. That's what this is. Ideally, the air mass would follow the throttle and go up here. But this is what I call the syringe effect. That can be eliminated by clever throttle body design. Shut off chart. This shows the number of cylinders that shut down during the period. And you can see that five cylinders shut down when I lifted my foot off the throttle. This, in effect, turns the engine into a compression brake because that means the sparks aren't sparking in the spark plug on the compression stroke. So the, um, the piston's going up, but the spark isn't firing to push the piston back down again. And that happened on five uh, five potential firings of the spark plug. Um, going into ignition data, the ignition angle chart, not really a lot to be gained from this, but it's uh, of interest. Injection timing chart, this shows how long the injectors were firing for in milliseconds. So you can see it's approximately three milliseconds until there was a hard acceleration and it went up to 12 milliseconds. This is the RPM curve. So you can see here we've got 7,000 RPM and injector one and injector four were both firing for approximately 12 milliseconds. Now you can work out how much fuel was going into your engine from that. And this is the injection time difference. This is the difference in time between injector number one and injector number four. Ideally, the difference would be minimal. It would be in the point 0.1 range. But as the engine runs faster, the timing seems to get more. The difference in the timing seems to increase. But that's, that's how I analyze my data.